In this lesson, we're going to talk about charts. Chris allows you to take your data once you have it and represent it graphically via a series of charts and options. In our case, we're going to continue to use Report 2. And in the Design view, go ahead and under Report Header, right click and say Insert Section Below. This inserts a brand new section for us, and this time I need to resize it. So by putting my mouse exactly on that section line between page header and report header B, it turns to a up and down pointing arrow. By holding down my mouse button, I can drag it down to a height I see fit. From here, I'm going to take my mouse and click on the insert chart icon. Now it helps if you've already defined your groups and your report before you create a chart. You also have this option when you do the report wizard but it kind of helps to play around with the data first depending on how complicated your data set is. Once you have it perfect then usually is the best time to insert a chart. Now ours may be far from perfect but it won't stop us. Go ahead and click on the chart icon. What this will do is it will turn the mouse and give you a chart highlight box to place in your report. Take the top left hand corner and place it where you need to be. In this case I'm going to place it on one of my snap to guidelines and click. The chart itself should adjust to the section that I put it in, although charts do require a certain height, if you will, before they allow themselves to be inserted into the report. From here, Crystal's decided to do the sum of the revenue amount by division. Again, that's a Crystal default. Right-click on the report and say Chart Expert. It also helps instead of saying Chart Expert, you click on it. From here, we get the Chart Expert window and here are all the charts available to us. In Crystal Reports 11 we have Histogram, Funnel, Agant, Gauge, Numeric Axis, Stock, Bubble, Radar, XY Scatter, 3D, etc, etc, as well as our Bar, Line, Area, Pie, and 3D charts. In this case let's do a simple vertical side-by-side -side chart. You can also choose to make it horizontal which is simply another way of looking at the data. We're going to leave it vertical. Then click on the data tab. Now here is where you get to choose what gets displayed. So on the change of division we see the sum of the revenue amount. The axis is where you kind of define which is the major, which is the minor, what data value range you get. You can either auto scale it or auto range it. It's up to you. You can also manually do it here. And the number of division is automatic. You also have some more options. You can choose it to be color, black and white. You can show the label and the data points, show the value. You can have a transparent background. You can have a marker size, a marker shape, a bar size. You can even show a legend and where it's placed. You can also color highlight based on conditions. You'd have to create these and play around with them. You can also choose which text is displayed, choosing the font of the title, subtitle, footnote, legend, so on. You can also change the title by unclicking it and saying revenue by division. You also put a subtitle, a footnote, a group title if you don't want the defaults. Go ahead and press OK. Now we see the option here but we still see the default chart. So let's go ahead and look at preview. And there you are, a simple bar chart by revenue amount for East and West divisions. Now that was a little too easy. These charts can get as complex as you need them to be, but as all graphical representations go, usually the simple the better. Let's go ahead and click on our chart, even in the Preview tab, do the Chart Expert, and this time let's change it up a little bit. Let's make it a line, and let's choose our data. If you click on the Advanced icon, you get to change the axes, i.e. the bars and the lines you see on the report. For example, an office name I can show the revenue amount. And notice the sum of the revenue amount by office name. I can also pull in the revenue date. You can also remove them as you see fit. So in this case, I've decided to override Crystal's default and say, show me office name by revenue date and show me the revenue transaction amount. And it's the sum of the revenue transaction. You can also do the min, the max, the anything by highlighting it and set set summary operation. Remember, your numbers will give you far more options to work with. But let's leave it as is and press OK. Notice now we have the list of offices, but you don't really see a date, except for, of course, 2008. 
That, of course, was defined by our select expert. If we click on the select expert, we notice our revenue dates are only between January 1st, 2008 and December 31st, 2008. If we delete it and then press OK and refresh our data, our chart all of a sudden goes all over the place. Notice all the different colors in the guidelines on our right hand side of the screen. Those represent every single year for all these offices. You have to be careful when designing charts. It's almost an art form. If you put too much, it doesn't make any sense and the message gets lost. Crystal allows you to put almost as many groups, sections, and areas as you see fit, but do so at your own peril. In this movie, we're going to continue our discussion of charts in Crystal. When we last left off, we took off the filters for our chart and our report overall and got a lot more detail. So it's important to realize that your selection criteria is also going to limit the data and the, what you see on your actual chart. Let's go ahead and go to the design tab and let's right click and go back to our chart experts. We're going to play around a little bit and show you a gauge. And in this case we're going to remove office name and just leave the date and the revenue amount that we need to see and press OK. Notice how this works. Also notice when I've changed my chart and changed what I needed to see it by, my title remained the same. That's simply because I manually overwrote it. I go to my chart expert and I go to my text. It's probably best if I leave it as auto text, otherwise I have to change it each and every time and press OK. I think this gives you a nice sample of what you need to look at. So once you hit preview, notice what it looks like. Certain charts don't function as well as other charts. For example, this gives me a little dashboard, a gauge for every single year I've asked for. My gauges are also determined by the scale set forth automatically. So it takes the largest value from the largest year and applies it to all the gauges. Let's go back to our design view. Right click our chart, go back to chart expert, and let's try another one. Let's try a pie chart. And here you get to choose a standard pie chart, a multiple pie chart, proportional pie chart, and you can also use depth effect, which kind of gives it this 3D look. Our data will remain the same. We'll leave it as revenue date and revenue amount. And press OK. It gives us a nice little sample of what we'll see, but not the exact. So once we click preview, now we get to see. This tells us that 2006 was our lion's share year where we made the most revenue. When it comes down to it, it really kind of depends on what you're trying to show. I can only advise that you keep it as simple as possible. If you add too many options, things kind of get out of hand. The last thing you need to realize is you can actually export these charts by using the export function in Crystal. You have to be careful though. These will export, for example, into Excel, but they will not function within the chart making function of Excel. They'll simply be a picture. They will be unchangeable to you past that point. If you needed to change the chart or update the chart, you'd have to do it in Crystal. Back to Design View. Go ahead and right click and choose Chart Options as opposed to Chart Expert. Based on what type of chart you chose to insert into your report, you have options. Like for example, our pie chart, we can tilt it like so. We can make the depth increase. We can rotate it around if we want to bring attention to something, line it up. We can explode it. From here, you can also choose the titles as you see fit, some titles and footnotes. You can also choose your data labels. Like, for example, you could show the values of each, either as a percentage or as the actual value of the field that you chose to summarize. In that case, our case being revenue amount. You can also show your labels show leader lines or not show them and show pi name. The chart options is going to be based on the chart you choose but let's go ahead and press OK and take a peek. This is our sample and when we hit preview we get something a little bit bigger. Now notice if you have lots of detail it tends to override a little bit. Now you can physically go in and drag these over and highlight these and drag them off and manually get them into place if you really need be. It's a little bit tougher than it looks, of course. You have to position all these so they're not crossing each other out or otherwise getting in the way.
the options are truly up to you. These come in handy, especially if you're exporting to PDF or printing up, because the picture tells far more than going through all the data. A lot of it, of course, depends. If you're actually building a report to check on exact detail, then you show the exact detail. If you need to summarize for executive level or management, sometimes it helps to throw in a chart. Crystal has a lot of powerful chart option tools for you. Again, there are limitations, but for the most part, it has almost everything you can imagine.